All right, number one. Uh, discussion on the Youth Council. Someone has that item, right? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, Mr. Okay, you're ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayor and Council, this is a continuation from the last work session to create an official Stonecrest Youth Council. Um, as was discussed last week, this is um, something that many of the cities in DeKalb County have, and we use the model from the city of Stockbridge to create our ordinance. Um, this is for high school youth only. It's following um, some of the guidelines from the National League of Cities and GMA and the um, the resolution, I believe, the ordinance, the attorney have already drawn up a draft ordinance, which you should have a copy of it in front of you. Uh, one of the roles of this council, this youth council, will be to promote civic engagement with our youth in the city of Stonecrest to give them a formalized role in local decision makings, to mentor them, to um, recognize them for the, for the work that they do in the community, and to also give them an increased voice um, to be able to communicate with other adults. And lastly, to help them become uh, the leaders of the future for the city of Stonecrest. This would also enhance their um, civic knowledge and their local municipality knowledge. And, um, and we would strive to partner with others in the community like so many other cities have done, like Stockbridge, Cobb County, and other cities who I've had discussions with. And um, one of the things that, one of the questions you had in the last work session was, how would um, these youth be selected? You should have a packet that kind of outlines how they will be selected. However, if you recall from the last meeting, it was um, discussed that we have an ambassador inaugural team um, for the first, um, group of students and that that group of students will attend the Mayor's Day Conference in January 2019 and along with our mayor they will be recognized by GMA and they will then join the ranks of, of other youth councils who will also be there, who will also get recognized um, for their um, youth activities in the community. One of the things I mentioned at the last work session was that we do need some seed money to get the Youth Council started. It can be as little as $10,000 or as much as fifty, sixty thousand, dollars 60000 depending on what we agree on. I did include in your packet of information, uh, it's a sample, but it's a real budget from the city of Stockbridge. Um, it appears that they initially started with about $10,000. I spoke to Councilwoman... Ro Neat Robinson over there, and she has been very, very helpful and instrumental in helping me put together the um, required documents. And um, the attorney have drawn up the ordinance. I think you, is it two or three, Madam Clerk? It's two. It should be a resolution and an ordinance. Okay. You no, should. there there are actually two two separate ordinances. One of the draft ordinances is a draft ordinance amending this the code of the city of Stonecrest, and it's to provide for the creation of the Stonecrest Youth Council. The second ordinance, um, again, amends the Stonecrest City Code, but it provides for the creation of the Stonecrest Youth Council Committee, which is in a, a group of adult volunteers to assist the city in creating a program and, curric and a curriculum for the Stonecrest Youth Council. So there are two separate ordinances. Okay, well, this came over as a resolution from you all. Okay. I forwarded them a copy of the email. They probably just got the emails. Okay. I, I got both. Well, I, yeah, you got both. I got both what you mentioned. Yeah, I got okay. There, yes, there, there are two, two ordinances. Yeah. And thank you. And the benefits, some of the benefits to the city is that now uh, we have about 24% of, na of the nation's population is young people. So 
we want to engage the young people in the civic process. Um, this will help them be more represent, help us be more representative of the percentage of youth that we have here in this city. And it would also help um, encourage them to be more actively engaged in the political process, in the civic process. And um, it would help us devise some of our services around um, the needs of the youth so that we can help stimulate economic development using our youth. And an extension of that would, would be um, partnering with the millenniums that I think the mayor have already put that in place, which is dealing with adults. But this is slightly different. Actually, it's much different because we're only dealing with the high school students. In addition to that, we have individuals, well, businesses that have stepped up and said, hey, what can I do? How can I be a part of that? What can, how can we um, sponsor something or whatever? But the main goal today is to just um, ask the council to please um, consider approving this ordinance and resolution. No, no there no. are just two ordinances. We just got two ordinances. Splash resolution. Oh, they're all mixed in. Okay, all right, got it. <coughs> to approve the two ordinances along with um, requesting that the city manager Take note that we would want to include appropriations. Um, and, and I will note that um, the drafts, these draft ordinances that were provided, they, they do require um, additional discussion and input. For example, the, the city would need to determine um, the number of use that would be selected, when they would be selected. Right now, we do have placeholders in there. Um, this is, again, was, was a draft that was provided just, just for thought and review. And the model that we're using, it, it's taken right out of the playbook for two other cities, as I said, um, Stockbridge and Cobb. But, but as Attorney Cosgrave just mentioned, we can customize this. We can, but and I, I would add to that point that it was also um, this ordinance. These two ordinances were drafted in connection with um, the City of Stonecrest Code um, in Chapter Two. Okay. And with, um, I pulled some samples also from the, they also have an advisory committee. And um, there should be some samples in your packet that you can review if you haven't already. Um, I also put some samples in your packet on the types of um, activities, like they have an opening retreat. Um, they have a day at the Capitol. They meet with the economic development staffers. They can attend some of our um, committee meetings. Um, they have minutes, so they are an official committee who is bound by a set of rules and minutes and regulations. Um, and this if I might add, this last Youth Council, they actually attended the National League of Cities um, conference, and they were um, they had a role on the program. They went to Los Angeles, actually, and the Youth Council also um, attend the GMA meetings. So I think it's um, the benefits to the city is that it shows that we are concerned about our youth and that we are providing. Um, an opportunity for our youth to be civically engaged and that we are um, mentoring our high school students. We have a lot of schools in Stonecrest and um, the selection process is also included in your packet of information. And I'll answer any questions that I can. I'm Ms. Cosgrave can answer questions if you have questions. Uh, just a statement in reference to this. I know that Ms. Cosgrove stated about, I guess, the uh, how to choose the students, how the students will be chosen. But I know that um, 
the school system is now revitalizing pretty much that junior achievement, and I remember that from when I was younger. And would those students possibly be coming from that vantage point, those little entrepreneurs or those little business people, or how will we get those students? That's a good question. I did, I met with um, Councilwoman um, Robinson from Stockbridge, and um, the recommendation I received was that these students would come from, um, they would either live in Stonecrest, go to school in Stonecrest, and what I wanted to add that she was also supportive of is say, for example, we got the Boys and Girls Club, we got the YMCA, YWCA, we have youth organizations, and so we don't want to leave them out. We got the Interact Club from the uh, Rotary Club. So we got a lot of students that do good community work here. So to, your, ans to, to answer your question, yes, I think they should be included if they're participating in other organizations that we benefit from. Thank you. Councilwoman, I'm in, I'm in support of the... Uh... Uh, of the committee, uh, but I'm not in support of, of uh, putting money behind it. Uh, we can start here locally if you like. Um, we have plenty of things that we can do right here in local and city hall uh, without putting a dollar to it just yet. I'd like to see how it works first. Let me ask. If you talk about the high schools, they have staff and personnel to supervise, monitor, and um, administer whatever needs to be administered with a program like this. Same thing with some of our well-established cities have staff on board to be responsible for minors, if you will, uh, with us being a startup city and having a contract service. Who will monitor and be responsible for these minors? I had spoke with um, City Manager Michael Harris. And um, again, I keep referring back to we're not reinventing the wheel. Um, the other cities are utilizing um, some of the staff. And it's not a whole lot of work. And plus, they have an adult advisory committee that's selected from amongst the community who will be helping with um, many of these tasks, these are high school students, so we're not looking to hold their hand. This is guidance. And, um, and any amount of revenue uh, appropriated for the startup of this program would, would definitely bring some value to it. Um, I know it can still start without appropriations, but that wouldn't be highly recommended without any type of appropriations to back the program. Okay. Let me just add, I think it's a great idea, <clears throat> but I don't see how it can fit here yet. I think we have a long way to go before we can take on such a responsibility. It's just my personal opinion on this matter. So um, bottom line, we need to get ourselves together so we can be prepared to handle something like this fully. Well, the program can actually... actually I was in the um, process of starting a program, and it came to my attention that it would be best, I mean, if we had a collaborative city effort to start the program. The program is, can start and be successful without the city. However, I think that, you know, to be all-inclusive and to show that we are concerned about the youth, this is what other cities have done. It's working. It's working well. A matter of fact, I've reached out and not one uh, negative comment about, you know, challenges have been brought to my attention. It doesn't mean that there aren't some, but whatever they are, they must be quite minimal. And um, we got a lot of support from other cities who say they'll come up, come over, help us get it started. Um, I think that this is one of the best ways to show that we are truly, genuinely interested in youth engagement. And this is one way to get them involved in the process. Again, um, these, are, these youth councils do exist in the private realm. I thought it might be best rolling it out and recommending it as a collaborative city effort. However, it's, it's up to the council whether or not you choose to um, approve this. I think it would be best to move forward with some type of monetary um, budget appropriated for it. 
I just don't see how we can be a great city and don't allocate any appropriations towards the foundation of building our youth. If I, if I may, sure. um, Councilwoman Madoma, I did look at the information that you sent us and that you distributed uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, I, I got um, a couple of questions and then a couple of concerns. Um, I, actually, I can probably resolve my question down to one, which is, uh, what is the pr proposed number of members to this youth, count, youth council? The information that you sent us uh, regarding Stockbridge, I noted that they have 11 to 15 students as a member as members of the youth council, and those students are are selected by the committee. Now, are you proposing 11 to 15 here in Stonecrest, more or less? Well, you know, I thought that would be a conversation for the council to kind of decide. Like, for example, um, what do we have? We got six members to have each member maybe pull two people from their district, uh, from the schools or the organizations in their district. That's something that we can decide. There's no cut and dry rule to how many we want to have. I don't know if Ms. Cosgrave put a number in the ordinance, and if she didn't. She did not. She okay, did not. Then if she didn't, that means that it's up for a discussion. Correct, and, and and she alluded to that earlier that we would probably need to discuss, the, you know, the number of members. But uh, I was just <coughs> piggybacking off the fact that you said that we're we're not reinventing the wheel and that we're basing this off of something that's already gone. And particularly, you mentioned Starbridge, and Starbridge does have a number, which is eleven to fifteen, which is neither here nor there, except for, you know, I think I think a more robust project will include. You know, uh, I mean, if we're truly, if our true intent is to promote our responsibility or our effort to help help the youth of Stonecrest, then we probably would need a ro a more robust robust number of students. So, uh, you know, like something that would you know tend to maybe. I don't know, uh, you know, a, a bigger segment of the student population. And, and then uh, for, the other thing is that they serve for one year in Stockbridge, and then they're reelected. And they're, 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 from what I read, they are required to attend 15 to tw 15 out of 20 meetings or something like that, which, you know, we have council people that can't attend all our council <laughs> meetings on that on that scale. But nonetheless, you know, I, I think this is a good project. I think this could be a good starting point. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the timing is, is good, and I'm certainly not at this point in time, you know, barring additional discussion. And, you know, with additional discussion, we may can come up with something that will work here in the city of Stonecrest that would include less of an impact on our budget and, and also less of an impact on our uh, city staff and personnel who are, you know, up against deadlines with, you know, critical issues like the, these IGAs and zoning issues and the, and the like, which, of course, you, our, we can introduce our youth to. So my, at the end of the day, I'm not saying no to a project of this type. I'm saying yes to let's find a robust way of getting more students included and trying to figure out a way to do it with less of an impact on our budget so it would be easier to digest and to promote. I think that's a good point, and I see this as being just as critical as the IGAs. And um, if we add, it, if we add, which I'm not opposed to, more students, um, and we're talking about not allocating or appropriating any monies, but yet we're talking about having more students engaged in the process. As I said, this was on its way as a private venture, and uh, it was brought to my attention that it would, it would be best to follow the models of the city. So to be collaborative and to be, you know, um, all-inclusive, I thought it would be best to roll this out to the council um, the, the the private sponsors are ready to work with this, but I thought it would be best to have the council first have the opportunity to see if the council wants to move it forward. Now, there will be some costs involved in, in running uh, the program. Um, so we I don't know how we can be effective with a youth council without any type of budget. I mean, even a couple of hundred dollars. But if we're not willing, if this council doesn't see 
you know, a couple of thousand dollars being valuable towards um, improving, you know, the leadership and the civic engagement of our youth. And I don't know what, you know, I don't know what we will do. Um, not opposed to uh, this. I think the council have had this information for more than a week and no one has emailed or asked me any question about it. I might have could have had more questions. I wasn't aware. I mean, um, um, Councilwoman Cabo loves it. Um, Councilman Rob Turner said, count me in. And I thought Councilman George Turner was in. So I didn't realize that there was any real pushback with anything to do with this particular um, ordinance. If I had known, I would have came more prepared to answer your Council, question. Councilwoman, uh, Adama, I, don't, I don't believe from where I sit that anybody is, is in objection to the ideal of working with youth in the city of Stonecrest. I don't think that's the issue at all. I think what the issue here is, is how we move forward, how we move from uh, a great start to a great finish. So, you know, as far as, you know, there's a lot of things to be considered. And I think that the ideal, I think that, and I, I can't put words in the mouth of other council members, but I think that every council member is is sold on the ideal of having some relationship with the youth and the uh, young folks in the city of Stonecrest. That is, and to me, is not the issue. The issue is the how, and I do think that we need to spend a, a little more collaborative time together to talk this out, you know, to work out the details. For instance, what you just mentioned in regards to the possibility of private input, particularly as far as funding goes. So if that is still, if that is on the table at all, it would still consider, I would think it would still be on the table, even if you collaborated with the city. So if there's fi private funding available, that would still work with the collaboration of the city that would make our job a lot easier in, this, in determining the direction of this. Well, uh, yeah. as I said, the council have had this information for a week. And if I had known that we had additional questions on it, I would have been more prepared to answer it. But to go back to your other question about private sponsors, um, Councilman Clanton, um, this this was put together initially as a private venture, and it was being driven with lots of interest. We put a halt on it to first have the council determine if this is something that they want to do. And I think Ms. Cosgrave have put a lot of time and hours into putting together an ordinance. Um, again, I got no feedback from anyone until today, but... Uh, you know, I don't have anything new to share. You have the complete packet from the city of Stockbridge. You have the ordinance that um, Ms. Cosgrave have put together. And um, the mayor have said he likes it, but he's not willing to fund it. So it's up to you all what you want to do. But I do have people who uh, are very um, active about wanting to do something with the youth in Stonecrest. And maybe we can start it as a private venture and later bring the city in. Um, you guys Council, Councilman Turner. Mm, yeah. Madam yes. Council. Uh, oh, that, uh, Rob Turner. That's, that's okay. Uh, I'm okay. sorry, Rob Turner. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Councilwoman, uh, you're absolutely right. I do support it. I think it's a wonderful idea uh, from anything that enhances the quality of life for our youth. I guess my question is, is it any way we could do this at a, a lower rate uh, in the sense of cost? You said $10,000 is the minimum for no, this? No, I said what I provided you uh -huh. was a sample budget of what um, the city of Stockbridge um, used what they have, that's their budget. Oh, okay. So I sent that budget so that you can see the line items and you can see the total dollar amount. But there's been no discussion about alternative appropriations either until now. So I don't know. So what my answer to you would be, we can negotiate this and make it be what we want it to be. Uh, if, if you don't like what's presented, then what is your counter offer um, to do something with the youth? If you, the mayor have said that he's not interested in funding it. And I don't know if that's the opinion of the rest of the council. If it is, then we're just working with something that's not going to be funded properly. Yeah. Just to uh, be clear, I do think this is a great idea. I spend a lot of time volunteering with young people, and we do need to get them involved in what's happening on the municipal level. I uh, we have to recognize that we're still trying to stand the city up. A lot of things have got to be put in place. We've got to grow a budget so we can 
fund some of these things and have personnel to manage it. I'm just saying I think this is a little bit premature, maybe by a couple of years. Um, otherwise, I would be ready to jump and run, but I mean run with the program, that is. <laughs> right now, I'm ready to jump and run the other way <laughs> because I don't think we are quite ready to handle it, and I would hate to venture into it and drop the ball. So I'm not ready to advance on it yet by a couple of years. Okay. Any further comments regarding this initiative? All right. Seeing none, we'll move to the discussion of the Stonecrest Citizens Plus Oversight Committee. That belongs to me. Uh, the purpose of the uh, <coughs> the uh, Citizens Plus uh, Oversight Committee uh, is, is is just the way it sounds. Um, but I'll be a little bit more formal with it so that people will know. Um, other municipalities and entities such as Rockdale, DeKalb, um, you, can, you can find just about every place has a, um, a, a SPLOS oversight committee um, uh, that's the device of their citizens. What makes us um, unique in part of this is that once we send out the information with regards to um, um, uh, the interest of the citizens. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the council persons. I think it, the, I know I experienced this. It exploded, and it exploded with some really solid talent and really solid citizens uh, that have experience in this area. And there's nothing would be better than to have uh, citizens that have a say so over their tax dollars that has the experience and talent in this given area. So the mission of the uh, citizens group. Uh, shall be to provide transparency and accountability to the citizens of Stonecrest regarding the expenditures from the 2018 SPLOS. So the purpose of the SPLOS Citizens Group shall be to, one, ensure that revenue collected under the SPLOS is spent in accordance with the CAB SPLOS law, uh, that it funds the SPLOS um, um, that are well managed and used efficiently, and that the projects funded um, by the DeKalb portion, uh, which belongs to us, SPLOS, is equitable, appropriately prioritized, and well distributed throughout the unincorporated um, or the incorporated area of the city of Stonecrest. So uh, simply put, um, um, we're developing this committee, and Mr. City Attorney, uh, we can edit some of this later, um, of a membership of 12. Um, we started with nine, then went ten, and then after the um, uh, high interest of our citizens, um, I moved that. I moved the number. I moved the number to twelve. Also, um, Mr. City Attorney, we can we can we can talk about this later. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. I I, I didn't want to stagger that with regards to to time. Uh, they all start and stop at the at, at the same time. So long and short of it, uh, Council. Uh, I've, matter of fact, I've heard from both of you all with regards to some candidates and um, some really good citizen candidates that you, that you guys have uh, provided for. Matter of fact, I've actually heard from everyone, uh, all all Council, with regards to candidates and members, um, uh, with regards to the Citizens Plus Committee. So in short, um, um, we'll collectively go through this particular uh, these particular people, uh, decide on them. And um, you know, make the they make the uh, committee official. Yes, sir. I'm looking at two committees here. Is, 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 is that correct? Uh, looks like one just actually language from the Cab County. So uh, the I'm at here. So you want there's to a Stonecrest that? Advisory Committee, and then there's a Stonecrest Citizen Oversight Group. The advisory committee, I believe, was the one that was related to the youth council in the top in the ordinance. No. Uh, that no, it says plus citizen oversight group, and this one says a resolution authorizing the establishment of a plus citizen 
Oversight Adva Advisory Committee. Okay, so this resolution here, I came from DeKalb County. Okay. Yeah, just in, uh, as an example. This is a sample, an example. Right. And then this one here, and then you'll, you'll see the one that actually says Stonecrest. Oh. There's a, a resolution authorizing the establishment of SPLOS Citizen Oversight Advisory Committee. Okay. All right. So, example, actual. And with this, does this body have any judicial powers? Well, no, when you say judicial powers. I mean, in terms of uh, being able to rule on matters that would be binding they, uh, this is a, this this committee is just like every other committee that we have, recommending, the recommendations. And this is the standard type of committee that the cab and many of the other cities have put in place to oversee the uh, expenditures plus funds. funds. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, I did get, and you did clear up some of it. Because I saw eight members, 12 members, yeah. and more, so... It'll be 12. It, it, it will be 12. Yes, sir. And that's coming from each district? Uh, so each, each, each district um, council person has sent names okay. with regards to uh, um, who they'd like to see on that committee. So, matter of fact, names and telephone numbers. So with 12, is that could be two per district? Not necessarily. Um, because I, we're going to reserve a couple for, um, as, a, as per our charter, a business. Because we have business owners that can be on the committees also. And we have some business owners in the city of Stonecrest um, that fit that particular criteria. So we can nominate as many as we want to nominate. Nominate as many as you want, yes. And then we'll, we, then we'll narrow it down from there. But the important part that I've asked people to do is to uh, have a, you know, a contact person, you know, a contact phone number. Right. Because I don't know 53,000 people and you just can't send me their name and then go, hey, here's this person, <laughs> which has happened already. <laughs> but not to the two people that are sitting up here. <laughs> All right. All right. We're clear. I believe so for now. Uh, yep. Something else is bound to come up. Oh, for sure. Oh, good. Councilman, you good? I'm good. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. City Manager, we and Mr. City Attorney, we'll uh, we'll fine tune the document, make sure it go you know goes back out. All right. Um, number three, discussion on Grice Consulting. Yeah, it's my understanding that the was this an internal conversation or was this going to be a conversation to be with with Grice to provide a presentation? It wasn't Mr. Attorney. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if, if you don't mind, can I ask, um, how, how did this item come to be added to the, uh, the agenda tonight, today? Uh, I can respond. Please. Um, the conversations that we've had in the past are 
progression of what would be taking place. I understand. Well, I, 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 my my question more pointedly is who added this to the agenda? You added it? Yes. I mean, it didn't just appear, did it? I did. Okay. All right. That's what I just wanted to know who added it. That's all. We didn't know you were going to have. Let me say good afternoon to Mayor and Council. Uh, they're going to be queuing up the presentation here shortly. I have provided. Thank you. Again, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, just for the record, I'm John J. Funny, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Grice Consulting Group. Thank you for inviting me here today uh, to offer input on this loss-related item. I'm here today to provide you with factual information about the professional services my firm offers. Thank you. To the offer to the City of Stonecrest. To back up quickly to give context, on August 11, 2017, Grice received an email from Mayor Jason Larry. This email request was sent to two consultant firms, Grice and CH Toom Hill Jacobs, the company that employs the city manager and the assistant city manager, and CC the full counsel and Tom Curry, the city attorney. In the email, Mayor Jason Larry formally requested our firms, Grice and CH Toom Hill, to submit qualifications and pricing to provide these services to the city of Stonecrest. In response to the mayor's request, Grice submitted qualifications and pricing on August 16, 2017. Then the mayor and the city council studied the two competing proposals, and on August 21, 2017, at a city council meeting, at approximately 10.30 a.m., based upon a recorded meeting, Rice Consultant was unanimously selected to provide these services to the City of Stonecrest. I will share with you today why Grice Consulting Group is the best proposal for the City based upon council selection. I will also share with you today the reason Grice Consulting Group is ready, willing, and able to hit the ground running with little to no learning curves. We're ready to get shovel-ready projects queued up and out of the door so the citizens of Stonecrest, the taxpayers, can see their SPLOS dollars at work. Just a bit about Grice Consulting Group. I founded the firm in 1995, over 23 years ago. We reformulized ourselves in 2010 in order to handle our international clients. We have a corporate office here in Atlanta, Georgia, but I would add that the firm started in DeKalb County as a citizen of DeKalb County. We have a regional office in Columbia, South Carolina, and an office in Washington, D.C. Staff of 12 principals and 34 employees assigned to project teams. We're an international leading firm, offering professional services and program management services, city and urban planning, transportation and transit planning, traffic and transportation engineering, water and sewer infrastructure projects. 75% <laughs> of our clients are repeat business. From a qualification perspective, the firm have developed the City of Atlanta Comprehensive Transportation Plan, better known as Connect Atlanta. 
This plan involved many of the aspects of the skill set that is needed for the City of Stonecrest transportation plan. That plan actually came up with over $1.6 billion worth of improvements. With that, the city actually took a bond out and actually bonded $700 million, over $700 million to start the implementation of projects that came out of the plan that we developed. We completed the earlier version of the DeKalb County Comprehensive Transportation Plan, yet again utilizing the same skill sets that would be required for the actual project here in Stonecrest. Some very specific DeKalb County project experience, the Klondike Roundabout Planning, Analysis, and Design, Redan Road Corridor Study, Covenant Highway Intersection Improvement, MARTA Kensington Station Transit-Oriented Development Plan, Memorial Drive Corridor Improvement, the Cab Mass Active Living Plan on the Covenant Highway areas. Also, we had two other the Cab Mass Active Living Plan on the Panola Road study area, as well as Flat Shoals Parkway. We're currently working on two major initiatives for the Cab County, that one being Moreland Avenue Transportation Scoping Project, as well as the Lawrenceville Highway Transportation Scoping Project. We worked with completing the Coweta transportation plan update, not the original plan, but the update, but it still went through all the elements that's required here for a plan. We did the Spalding County comprehensive transportation plan. We did the city of Valdosta transportation plan with city manager Larry Henson. I'm sure you know Mayor, uh, city manager Henson very well. Atlanta Beltline, we worked on the Atlanta Beltline project. This is a park bike, ped, trail project with redevelopment throughout the city of Atlanta. We've worked on this project since 1998 under the then mayor, Mayor Shirley Franklin. First, it started with a, a feasibility study. Is it feasible to have a belt line? That went on from 98 until 2000. From 2000 until 2004, we did the complete redevelopment plan to show the developer what are the potentials are as it relates to the belt line. And then from 2004 until present, we did the original sub-area master plan for six of the ten sub-areas, and now we're going through an update because time have lapsed, so they want to update the plans. Development have happened. The belt line is partially built. Uh, transit isn't there yet, but it's coming. Um, so we were, we've been tied to this project, and I call this one of our signature projects. I don't tell all of our clients that because every client wants to be a signature client, but this is one of our signature projects because it's the longest-running history project within the firm. It's an international award-winning project. This project has won over 30 awards since 2010. The 2015 Phoenix Award, and I won't name them all, the 2014 ACEC Engineering Excellence Award, and many more. We also worked on the planning initiative for MARTER. We were on a team where we actually did a lot of the planning and studies for the I-20 extension uh, from Stonecrest, Turner Hill Road, all the way to downtown Atlanta. We looked and evaluated 12 station location or touchdown points for this future transit alignment going into downtown Atlanta, providing services to the Stonecrest area. Program management service. We're currently on the team for the Georgia Major Mobility Investment Program, major initiative. Uh, it's a statewide program management project. Um, it includes a host of services, as you see listed there. And the actual, this one flipped on me. But the project is uh, it's a really a project over 10 year, of, uh, 22 years. It should be done by 2026. So they are planning the design and phase of it to be done by 2026. But we're involved with the planning, oversight, project management. We're working with contractors overseeing the construction. One of the major ones that's going on now is a project we just recently designed. is I-85 north of downtown Atlanta. That's being widened. They're going to add express lanes there. So we're involved with the planning, the engineering side, and the construction management side also on projects of these magnitude. Richland County, we did, we are working on the transportation penny program, very similar to Stonecrest Sploss. Very similar, just started two years ago, earlier. But we're heavily involved with managing the project, not just planning and engineering, but also construction oversight to make sure the projects are being built as was planned and designed. That, that is a 22-year transportation improvement project. They're actually spending uh, just over $600 million for roadway improvements, um, over $300 million for transit improvement, 
and over $80 million for bike, pedestrian, and greenway improvement. City of Columbia, the Clean Water Program, another major initiative that we are working on. Uh, this is a 10-year contract. We're actually providing program management services for the improvement of their water infrastructure throughout the entire city of Columbia, uh, the sewer project, actually. Um, but this is to make sure that they have good separation at the pump stations, make sure that they can handle the water as it flows in from floods and make sure it's not contaminated water getting into the neighborhood. So this program uh, started about four years ago, and we have another six years to go because it's a part of planning, engineering, design, and construction oversight. City of Virginia Beach, this one is unique. We tend to lump a lot of projects in transportation projects. With this project, there was actually a facility built, spending transportation money, so we call it a transportation project. Um, but I say that to say that we bring the skill set to provide to the city of Stonecrest facilities management as well. We're not architect, but what we do, just like we did for the city of Virginia Beach, we bring a team together and we bring the architect in and help them with the process. But this is a part of the engineering community. We always team to make sure that we have the skill set on board to be able to execute the services as it's spelled out in any scope we sign. I want to touch on that one. That one dealt with the emergency evacuation in Washington, D.C. Um, but just to look at nationally where we worked, this just give you a high-level overview of some of the projects we've worked on nationally. International experience, this gives you some experience that the firm have worked on uh, internationally. And I'm going to pick on Cape Town very, uh, for a quick second because Cape Town brought us in to look at preparing for the World Cup when it was there, the Soccer World Cup. When it was there. So we had to identify new transportation roadway, have pay, roadway paved. We had to look at parking lot design, the drainage, the water design for the parking lot. Basically, there were temporary parking lots that were established to handle the influx of people that were coming to a city um, that didn't have no place to put them, but to be able to manage that crowd. So we call it special event planning, special event engineering and design. And then we also had engineering inspectors there overseeing what was being built. The next one I'm going to pick on is in uh, Jamaica for the Ministry of Transport. They brought us in to look at their traffic management center, which is a facility, and to help them to identify how to better facilitate the engineers within a building. And they asked us to also provide training on the staff that they had. Facilities was redesigned. Um, the actual staff augmentation was provided. We provided with st staff augmentation to make sure that we provided training on a day-to-day -day basis. So that, those are two that I'll pick on. Another one is Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, we are actually involved with the program management where they decided they wanted public transport, which is a great thing, but they decided to build it all at once, which that wasn't what we were expecting, but they're building heavy rail, light rail, BRT, and streetcar all at once. So we work with them. We have bodies there currently <laughs> working there to help facilitate the program management. People believe in U.S. experience. That's what we take to our international clients. We have standards that have been developed that they love. We have construction oversight that they love. So that's what we're doing in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Then I'll jump into what is a transportation plan, um, just so that we are all understanding what we're talking about. A CTP is a multimodal plan that identifies future transportation system needs that includes highways, public transportation, rail, bicycle facilities needed to serve the anticipated travel demand in the future. It's a 20-year plan. It's a roadmap. What do you want to do with your transportation system? Why is a transportation plan important for the city of Stonecrest? The Stonecrest CTP will guide transportation improvement and investments in the city. It will provide a quality assessment of transportation project needs and recommendations based on technical analysis and community input. It will be used as a planning document for the next 20 years. So when you have a list of projects in your plan, every five years you look to develop your CIP, you can go to your plan and pull out the project based on the prioritization that the community had involvement with. So that plan is there to support the initiative on, on a five-year basis when you begin to look at your CIP. What are the benefits of a, CI, of a CTP? process has many benefits. Um, I just mentioned it includes a list of projects that have been vetted technically, as well as with the community. 
Uh, it supports the community adopted vision and goals by integrating land use and transportation planning. It allows communities to consider all modes of transportation. <laughs> and it is more efficient and technically sound to tie into the ARC and the GDOT planning process. ARC and GDOT need something that has been technically developed, not just a project list, but they need something that has been vetted and technically, de technically developed. It also provides an opportunity for the city to obtain federal funding or specific grant opportunity that may come through ARC. If you have a transportation plan and you have identified projects in that plan that matches the requirement of a grant, it's easy to then carry that plan over into that paperwork for the grant because you have a plan. They know, been, they know it's been technically sound, it's technically sound, and it's been vetted with the community. Those are two major issues with the federal government. Did the community have input with coming up with these projects that you're going to apply for on a grant? So it's very important that the plan is in place and it's more accountable to the public through the formal public involvement process. Our, our innovative approach, we are innovative. We feel we are best to none when it comes to the services we provide. Um, been in business for over 23 years. I have 31 years of experience in this field. Um, we work internationally, but we have very unique approaches to the projects we take on, and I would do the same here in Stonecrest. It's vision-based, start with the goals in mind. It's community-driven, technically sound, focusing on the goals of Stonecrest. Uh, it's funding-focused. We would, we would look at existing funding and leverage funding uh, for new projects, new funding. We call it new money. And then we will be integrated. We'll look at what has been done in the past and then apply that to what is being planned in the future. So the scope that the city requested, the city administration requested us to adjust, in which we did, per the city administration request, we adjusted the scope to fit with the particular price that the city administration wanted us to come to. And I'm not sure if council is aware of those adjustments, but I just want to walk through what the adjustments are. Phase one, project management and data acquisition is a part <laughs> of the scope. Phase two, transportation goals, objectives, and policies, which includes the public stakeholder meetings and the public survey. Phase three is the existing condition assessment. Phase four was omitted because we identified with the city that since the city is developing a comprehensive trans comprehensive plan, which include land use, we will just pull the land use component from that plan to apply to the transportation plan. So the scenario that we will use is the existing and whatever future scenario comes out of the comprehensive plan. Phase five is the future transportation need assessment. It goes through a host of analysis there uh, within the future need assessment. Uh, phase six, we get into project definition cost and potential funding. Uh, that's where we'd get into project prioritization. We come up with implementation plans, and we basically develop all the actual spreadsheets and the different uh, documents that's needed to put projects in an identifiable manner. We identify uh, potential funding. Uh, we identify um, potential source of funding as well. Um, and then we put, identify the owner. Some projects in this area will be owned by the federal government because I-20 comes through the city. So you have an opportunity to leverage off of some federal funds because of the connection to I-20. So we'll go through and document very clearly uh, the funding that we feel that would be appropriate for the different projects that, are, that will be developed. Then phase seven is the documentation, which deals with the draft plan and final plan. A lot of writing, a lot of graphics, a lot of GIS mapping. Um, the deliverables uh, that will be a part of the CTP deliverable project management plan. Uh, we will deliver every project meeting notes, meeting minutes. There will be a tech memo for the data acquisition and planning, GIS mapping. Uh, we will do a technical memorandum on the existing transportation system to describe that carefully. Uh, we will document a public involvement plan. We will also, also document every public involvement meeting so that we can keep track of what the citizens are saying. We will also develop a Stonecrest transportation survey that will go out to the public. This is the first time to get it right. The best way to get it right is to get input from the public. And I always have a model when I go to these meetings is that I listen, listen, and listen for more. Because you always want to make sure that you're hearing the key issues that are actually affecting uh, the citizen within the city of Stonecrest. Um, 
Then there will be uh, several other tech memos that will be developed, the survey results. We'll develop an evaluation framework to evaluate the projects. We'll come up with a short and long-term range need assessment. Uh, we'll look at the future transportation planning needs. And then we'll talk about, look at some of the future traffic operation as we get into some of the bottlenecks within the city. Uh, we'll develop the goals and objectives. The plan document is the actual uh, document that will be delivered. Uh, the GIS project playbook, this is something that we came up with where we actually identify every project in a GIS map, and you can hit the, the list of projects, and it'll take you directly to the map, and you'll see what the project is. So we develop a playbook to present to our client when we present the plan. Then the final document will be developed after we receive a round of public comments, after we receive comments from staff. Well, getting to the document that was provided to us by a uh, city attorney, uh, there was a document that was provided to us, and I have a response to each of the bullet items. So if you ha I think that was provided, Council, right? That's right. They have, okay. they have it. Yes, so if you have that, I will actually go page by page and respond to each bullet that have been presented to Rice. Give us one second. Yes. Yes, it should be three pages. All right. At the top of the page, it says Grace Consulting Scope and Budget Review and Prep, September 24, 2018. That's it. Okay. I'm good. I'm good, Mr. <coughs> Give us one more second. Sure. No problem. They also had your, what was sent as far as those that were Before I go into that document, I would like to share one additional item. Um, and I'm not sure if, well, I'll just say for the record, let me state that during the month of November 2017, uh, Grice drafted and submitted a contract via email to the assistant city manager with terms and conditions. The contract included Exhibit A, Scope of Service, a pre-SPLOS project list. Exhibit B, schedule of service for that scope. Exhibit C, scope of services for the comprehensive transportation plan. Exhibit D was the schedule of fees for that CTP, comprehensive transportation plan. Exhibit E, scope of services for SPLOS program management. And Exhibit F, schedule of fees for SPLOS program management. I received an email back from Assistant City Attorney requesting the Word document so that the City Attorney could redline and edit the contract with all those exhibits. The contract got a proposed contract? The contract. The, um, when the contract came, um, and what's customly done with contracts as a lawyer is that you're going to propose edits to it. So what was requested was the word version of everything that had been presented. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. So. As I was stating, the contract was drafted with all the exhibits, all three of the services, with the fees for each of the services, and submitted to the assistant city attorney. He asked for the word document. We emailed the word document for the contract and all six of the attachment. And I received the red line back from the city attorney back in November of 2017. I accepted all of the changes. So I was sitting back waiting on a contract to be executed. This was November of 2017. So now getting to the document that you have in front of you, with regards to the bulleted items that the city have provided to Grice. Uh, page one, bullet number one, Grice cost is not exorbitant and is consistent with the requested CTP scope of services. Every project that we work on is uniquely different and catered to our client. We have no cookie cutter scope. 
every client changes something in a scope. That's fine. But there's no apples to apples with every client. <coughs> Rice CTP scope is unique to Stonecrest. And do not compare apples to apples to Brookhaven, and Dunwoody or Tucker. Okay, can I interject or yes, as you go? Yes, so so that, that way we can be fresh yeah, as right we right go. Here. Exactly. <laughs> so when you say that Grice's cost is not exorbitant, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it, so from your point of view, that is what you're saying, because for part of the reason is because there is no cookie cutter comparisons that you can say that this price is exorbitant simply because you compared it to Brookhaven. Is that I correct? Facts here. No, I'm just saying, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, but also what you say that exorbitant would also would be a point of view from the other side as well. For instance, if, you know, like what you just said, you don't do cookie cutters. So for the city of Stonecrest, in your opinion, could you see where the word exorbitant can be used to describe the cost, given that there is no cookie cutter and that for our city, maybe that is exorbitant. So the definition of exorbitant is unreasonably high. Absolutely. And I would say that that's 100% wrong. I will share why. Okay. I want you to see what I've compiled based upon the facts. Certainly. Because if you're, let me share why. Sure. Dunwoody developed its first CTP in 2011. Now, and, and also, just to be clear, we're, we're still talking about CTP. That's correct. Okay, yes. just to be clear. And the document did well about separating the two, so I'm following okay. the document. Okay, all right, I, I get it. I'm yes. just making sure. No, no problem. So Dunwoody developed his first CTP in 2011. Uh, the Dunwoody CTP identified transportation strategies and projects based on the policy and goal statements. Although this was the first, the city's first transportation plan, the majority, I repeat, the majority of the city's transportation needs were identified in other planning efforts, such as perimeter CID. They develop a transportation master plan. We were a sub-consultant on that plan. We identified all the transportation priorities. That's one example. Atlanta Regional Commission LCI plans. There were several LCIs within the perimeter CID area. They had a, they still do. They have a very active CID. And they do a lot of this work. They've gotten federal dollars to do a lot of the transportation improvements. Uh, the LCI plans were developed for several areas within that area. So they give them a lot of, I would say, uh, starting point versus the city of Stonecrest. There's not a lot of CID activities going on to plan a lot of what needs to happen. Um, there was a Stonecrest LCI, but that is outdated now. I think ARC is looking at bringing that back around. Um, so there are a lot of initiatives that are actually supporting what Perimeter CID did. GDOT and Greta did the I-285, revived 285 corridor study. Every time an arterial touches 285, they went all the way into the city to make sure that they identify all the transportation improvement on I-285, all the way from 75 in Cobb to 85 in DeKalb. So every time an arterial touch, so, so Perimeter got a lot of benefits off of all the other planning initiatives that were going on. And I mentioned earlier that Grice was a sub-consultant to Urban Collage who developed the transportation plan. They also gave them the urban design plan. Okay, and, and I get that, and and I and I, I don't want to cut you short, and you know, and I won't. I will not cut you short. I want you to continue and 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 be sure to finish your point. I'm not having a problem with your background, with your work, with your scope of services, what you bring to the table. I'm not having at all a problem with that. I I feel that for what you do, and for what I understand that you do you're probably well, well qualified. So that is not for me on the table. What is on the table for me is the comparisons of costs. If, for instance, the city of Stonecrest come back and tell you that, look, go back and come up with a plan or a scope of work that will fit into our budget, which is $180,000. Whether or not they, which I saw that, I saw that, I'm, I'm alluding to that. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Finish. 
So when with that on the table, when in as far as contract negotiations go, that is part of the gist of negotiating. You know, one side say this is this. I don't. I don't really play well to you know. In a in a negotiation where individuals are upset by terminologies and words that are used, and I do understand that that may be a blow, you know, to your reputation, for instance, or maybe not. But you know, so if somebody say that this is exorbitant, I, I don't think you should get stuck on that particular issue, as opposed to whether or not this is factually a uh, an item that we need to. Um, to address otherwise. So if, for instance, you guys cannot meet, you know, if, if our city staff says who you have acknowledged that are also in the business of doing SPLOS and CTPs and the like, if they say, look, in our world, this is not reasonable, then you negotiate or you say, well, we think for what we do, it is reasonable. My point is, how do you reconcile the differences between the two and why would it be a issue for you to adjust your pricings just uh, to meet those issues, not just on this one particular item, but throughout this conversation, because I, I got a, got a feeling that what, what you're going to point out is, you know, line by line, dot by dot that, you know, here's the, here's what the city is, is asking. Here's why we want to keep our prices where it's, where it is. So on the document that... Uh, may I? Yeah. I believe that is why we invited him, and that was to explain the difference as to why his numbers are what they are and how they compare to uh, the numbers that have been thrown out in comparison to other cities. And we'll, to see if there is genuinely a difference or are we asking for some things that um, other cities did not ask for? And if we choose not to get those things, then naturally the numbers would be adjusted, I would think. But uh, I want to hear him out with the explanation because I've never heard mm -hmm. the explanation from this party. Right. And, and as I said, I do not want to cut you off. I do not want you to not to continue. I just want to interject as we go so I can get an understanding. So at the end of this process, I don't have to ask a million and one questions dealing with some of the issues that you may have brought up. That's all. So, again, I am not asking you to omit anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I would share that, um, as Councilman Turner mentioned, um, we have reduce the scope to match the city's $180,000. But I will share with you the things that I had previously recommended that's not in the scope anymore so that you'll have a clear understanding of what was removed from the scope to bring it down to the $180,000. Thank you. Sure. In addition to Grice being on the team to develop the Peruna CID plan that rolled into the transportation plan, we were also on several of the engineering design team to design projects that came out of the plan, just for a point of note. Um, and because Perimeter CID was actively engaged in the planning, the engineering, the design, and construction, the development of the CTP, and that's why I say you've got to compare apples to apples, their CTP was to compile all of the previous planning studies and then identify the gaps and fill those gaps. There weren't many gaps because perimeter CID was studied out. Mm -hmm. So when Arcadis was paid $60,000, it was to combine all these planning documents, pull it together, and create that overall project list from all of these different plans. They didn't have to go through modeling. They didn't have to go through a lot of neat <laughs> assessment. They didn't have to go through project identification because it was already done in many other plans. The Dunwoody scope does not compare the city of Stonecrest CTP scope that Grice proposed. In summary, the Dunwoody, the Dunwoody CTP consolidated planning efforts previously completed by other planning projects made a great contribution to their overall CTP. It included the Perimeter CID, the CAB CTP, ARC, LCI planning efforts. They all identified major transportation projects that went into the CTP. 
95% of the roadway within Dunwoody is in the regional model. ARC has a model, and most of the roadway are significant, either a minor arterial or a major arterial. They're in the model. Versus Stonecrest, a lot of the roadways are not in the model. So previously, we thought it would be great to develop a model that fits to Stonecrest needs to be able to identify roadways such as um, Hayden Quarry, Rock Spring, and Klondike. Add it to a regional model, run the model, and be able to forecast. So we took that out of the scope to bring the price down because if we're trying to compare you know, to apples to apples, I had to remove the model and effort to enhance the model <coughs> and capture Stonecrest local streets. It has the major streets, don't get me wrong. It has Panola, it has Turner Hill, um, it has a portion of Mall Parkway. Um, Evans Mill is in there. Uh, the new, actually, the new roadway that's going to punch through, going through by new birth, they already started modeling that because they know it's going to be a major arterial. So it has some of them in there, but it doesn't have all the roadway to, to specifically speak to the future transportation needs for the next 20 years. If we are to run a model, and it's a computer-generated model. If we are to run a model and forecast, we need to be able to put in different scenarios to determine what will be the transportation need in 2020, what will be the transportation need in 2030, what will be the transportation need in 2048. We can't do it if the roadway is not in the model. So we took that out of the scope to bring the price down. I'm going to move very quickly. Brookhaven developed its first CTP in 2014. And, and just, I don't think it's a secret, um, city attorney was there when I was sworn in as a planning commissioner in Brookhaven since they started. I'm still a planner in Brookhaven, still a planning commissioner in Brookhaven. I know a lot of information about Brookhaven, what's going on in Brookhaven as it relates to the planning effort, engineering effort, and city administration. Several previous planning effort contributed to the Brookhaven CTP. The CAB CTP, the LCI, the LCI update, the overlay district, the Buford Highway Economic Development Plan, the Brookhaven MARTA Station, LCI TOD that my firm worked on. So we developed a lot of projects within Brookhaven and other efforts to roll into the CTP. Although this was the city's first transportation plan, the majority of the city's transportation needs, again, was identified in other efforts. Um, so the Brookhaven CTP did not include, for example, uh, the design charrettes that we recommend for the city of Stonecrest. So with the new city, we thought we would put in our proposal to have half-day design charrettes where you bring in planners and engineers, some 12 to 16 staff person in a room, and we're there all day to listen to the community come in and point out what roadway is a problem, where would they like to connect to on bikes, where would they like to connect to on, uh, as far as walking or jogging. So we thought that would be a great thing. It's not required for CTP, but I think it's a good thing to have for the first CTP. So we took that out of the scope as well. Um, keep in moving very quickly. Alternative scenarios. So. Brookhaven CTP did not include alternative scenarios. Let me explain to you what that is. As I mentioned earlier, we're not doing land use analysis. We're going to take the existing map as is. We're going to take the future land use map from the comp plan, and those will be the two scenarios modeled. Let me tell you how Atlanta got it around. Traffic grew differently than that future plan. So what Grice was proposing to the city of Stonecrest is we would do a low growth scenario, medium growth scenario, and a high growth scenario. And we would identify projects with each of those scenarios to be able to meet the demand in the future so you have one of three places to go in the future. If you have low growth, medium growth, or high growth. The plan that they will be providing to Grice is a future land use map, one scenario. Some of the scenario may be agriculture. Agriculture doesn't generate 20 cars a day if you have a farm working. But if that flips to a major redevelopment and it goes into high growth, it will not be <coughs> captured in your CTP because we're going to be able to have one scenario of that future land use map. So if agriculture changes to mixed use or residential, we're doing only agriculture because that's what's in the future land use map. So we removed that from the scope also because that's a big piece in modeling each of those scenarios and coming up with projects. You have a question of you? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the Brookhaven CTP did not include a detailed analysis of significant, significant corridors. So they did the CTP, and then after that, they had another RFQ for 
Ashford Dunwoody Corridor Study. They had another RFP for the North so, Druid Hills Road. Now I do have a question. Okay. So are, are you still on the first bullet? I'm on. Because, I mean, again, we, I, I, I'm willing to concede that, you know, the, the comparisons, you know, I get that, you know. So, I mean, to detail out, the, you know, what happened in Brookhaven and what happened in Dunwoody and all that, it's not really relevant to why I believe we are at the stage that we're at. And, and the reason that we're at the stage we at, I, you know, disappointingly say to you that it has nothing, nothing at all to do with you you or your company. It has more to do with the process that we believe our way. Uh, I, 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 I think it has more to do with the process, the process by which Stonecrest moved forward in SPLOS management. And in your, you know, uh, you know, if, if, if there's a need for you uh, or council members to, to hear out the presentation, then I'm, I'm willing to sit back and, 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 and listen quietly until you get done. But otherwise, you know, you know, there are some more pointed issues that I'm, I'm, I'm more, um, I'm more, I would, be, I would be more willing to hear your side of the story on, for instance, the recommendations of the staff, you know, as you have this, this sheet of paper. And if you get to the bottom line, you see what staff recommendations are and how you think that align with uh, what, what it is that you feel that you were uh, justifiably tasked to do within the city of Stonecrest. And I think that would, you know, be more pointed as to how we move forward from here uh, because um, for instance, I can ask you right away, are you agreeable to whatever the staff recommends as far as contract negotiations go? Respectfully, Mr. Funding and to your attorney, I'm going to give you 10 more minutes. Thank you. And then we're going to go to staff. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we talked about Brookhaven, so we shared why the price difference are there. These are just the areas that were excluded. Uh, let's go into program management. Um, the key positions, program manager, principal in charge, contract administrator, specialist, uh, project director, project engineer, public information officer, and admin support. Uh, these are just some of the tasks that are in the document that have already been provided to the city. Uh, this document again, haven't changed. Uh, it's the same scope that the city attorney red line provided, so it's the same one. So I'm not going to go through each one because nothing changed on this one. Um, I'll tell you what did change. So the scope is there. All of that's there. The scope is there. The same. We did add the community outreach program. We think that's key with a lot of the projects we work on, the small and local business program, the mentor protege program, as well as adopt the school program. <coughs> Add that in because that's that's a CEO, CEO initiative that I put in place in every city or country we work in. We go into a school, we adopt the school, and help mentor engineers. Um, SPLOS PM proposal bullet number two on page one per the city administration request. Rice revised the SPLOS program management scope and detail uh, scope and deleted tasks associated with public safety. Uh, Grice consultant has developed a pro program management scope. We tailored it to the specific need of Stonecrest. Um, with the revised scope, the fee submitted on September 17th is as follows, and it's not what's in that document. Um, so the document you received from this 24th document is not what we submitted where we are with our price. What we submitted is a monthly fee of 38000 Do you have that information that we can share? Yeah, you have that. That's the document. Oh, you said it's not committed. It's not submitted, or is it? So, they, so the city made an error in capturing what we quoted. And I'm giving a correction to what we quoted in our proposal. Okay. Do you have that proposal? The city attorney have it. We can forward that to you. We can definitely I, get that to you. I think that would probably be a good idea. Sure, no problem. We can get that. I was thinking that when we uh, to forward it, particularly to the city city no, attorney. You, you, if, it's we, mis, if, if it's misquoted, that's one thing. If it's a uh, you know, well, I think man, I think staff can verify that, but but. A copy of of that of of what was submitted has was circulated to everybody on council. Okay, and is it does it align with words, this at all? In other words, this is this is what this was the comment to that document. So I respectfully disagree. The numbers that we submitted 
on September 17th of 2018 does not match the numbers that is in the city's review of our submittal. So I provided the updated numbers on what we submitted. It would be 38,000 monthly fee, annual proposed fee is 466,000, total six year fee is 2.799 after the city requested that we remove certain scope items, more specifically parks and rec and public safety. So that was the difference, but I wanted to just point that out. Keeping right on, um, in addition, while comparing each city that have a SPAS program manager, they have a public works department, they have a procurement director, they have a finance manager, they have public works staff, they have public works engineer, engineers to do a lot of the SPAS lifting. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think the city of Stonecrest have that. The SPAS team would have to provide all of that. The city of Stonecrest don't, don't have standards. What do we stand? We would have to develop all of this from scratch. So when we are comparing other cities, for example, um, Brookhaven has a company, Low Engineering. They're doing, they have a, two contracts with the city. So when you're comparing, you've got to add them both together. They have a public works contract, and then they have a SPLOS program management contract. The SPLOS is about 5%. When you add in what they're doing for public works, it adds up to about 10 to 12% of all the stuff they're doing. So the city of Stonecrest will not compare apples to apples because there is no public works department or engineering staff here. We would have to do all of that within the SPLOS program management team. So our 7% is considering that. Unless the city brings on a full public works department and public en uh, engineering department, then we can reduce it. But right now, we assume that that's what it is. We had our SPLOS planning retreat scheduled in November of 2017, and that was canceled by uh, Mr. Joyner. The intent of why we always stand up SPLOS program by having a retreat, we begin to learn the things that the city have and do not have. From my outside, I assume that the city do not have a public works department, an engineering department. So Brookhaven uh, has that contract. Dunwoody have a contract for public works. And Dunwoody also have a contract for SPLOS program management. 5% SPLOS program management. When you add in the public works contract, it goes up to about 12%. Grice is proposing for the city of Stonecrest at 7% to do all of that. The engineering side, the public works side, and the SPLOS side, because the staff is not there. We're ready, willing, and able to get started, to get projects going. We feel you have the right choice. It's just that we are at this point where we are. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is the scale and the magnitude of SPLOS program management. If you compare DeKalb County's comparison, $660 million is their program. The SPLOS program manager is quoted as 2.75%. That's $18 million over six years, which gives them about $3 million per year, $252,000 per month. Rice, 7% of the $40 million, which excludes public safety, parks, and rec, brings it down to $40 million. 7% comes to $2.799 million over six years, $466,000 per year, $38,000 per month. Just to be able to look at the scale of magnitude, when you have a larger volume of projects, the percentage typically goes down. Because you have the largest, you have $600 million versus $40 million. In summary, Stonecrest don't have public works, they don't have procurement, they don't have finance director, they don't have public works staff, they don't have public works engineer. We would take that on to make the project successful. So in comparison of the other 5%, I feel Grice is a very good choice at 7% to cover all the areas mentioned. Uh, if, and again, if we were to add the others in, it would be um, at that higher percentage. And we appreciate the mayor sending a letter to uh, CEO Mike Thurman, recognizing that Grice have been retained as the SPLOS program manager, and we're ready to get the work. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. You appreciate the mayor doing what? We appreciate the mayor sending a letter to CEO Michael Thurman, recognizing that the city voted unanimously to select Grice Consulting Group to make, and the letter's there. Uh, this letter, sort of public, full public disclosure, this letter was drafted at the request of Mr. Joyner by the firm, sent to the attorney, and we have email documentation of this if you need the emails, um, sent to the city attorney to basically announce 
that we would need to get in and work with the cab to start working on the Panola Road projects and any other project that will cons that would be working in collaboration with the cab county. So I can provide the email that went back and forth between the three of us with drafting this letter so the mayor can sign it and send it over to you. Right, and, and Mr. Grace, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Funny, Funny yeah. uh, Mr. Funny, I, you know, respectfully. Um, personally, I, I, I don't care about the letter one way or the other. Um, but, and the reason being is that the city of Stonecrest, obviously, as city council members, misstepped at some point in time in this process. It has been my contention all along that not to exclude Grice Firm from our going forward, but to step backwards and get this right. I believe that you would agree with me in your dealing with cities throughout the country and throughout the world that typically the process doesn't go the way that it has done in, in Stonecrest. And certainly I believe you would agree with me that you would probably have had no contract or no engagement where after you felt that you had been properly engaged that the entity then said, well, we're having problems. You know, I, I think you would agree with me that all entities understood fully what it was that they was getting involved with. It is my contention that in the city of Stonecrest, that is not the case. And to say that a, a entity should continue down a path that, that we may have, I'm not saying that we have, but that we, we may have engaged in, um, not fully aware of what was on the table. I, I mean, I'm, uh, you look, look, look at what you're looking at now. We have six city council members, including the mayor. Whether or not you have spoken to them is irrelevant. But the fact of the matter is three are here. Everybody else left. Our council is not the most engaged group of people on the planet. And that is a fight. And it's, and it's, and it's playing out now. This should never have been the case. We should not have this, this exercise. It's, it's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your energy, it's a waste of your effort, as well as the city's. What I am proposing and have always proposed is, again, not to exclude you in this process or your company, but to get this right, to do what other cities, you said that you was on the planning commission for the city of Brookhaven, I believe, and I'm certain that you're, in your experience, you all have offered RFQs and RFPs to get jobs done and work done because it's commonly accepted practice. It's the best way. For instance, in, the, in Brookhaven, I believe it is, um, some news article came out that they had entertained 34 different companies for their SPLOS management. 34. How many Stonecrest, as you said, according to what your statements was that, we only looked at two, one of which actually worked for us already, and then, uh, then you being the second. So when you start comparing prices, you're not comparing prices the same way that you would do in other instances if you were in front of another city council where you would, you would give given the opportunity to project what it is, number one, how do your company qualify for what, what it is that the city is asking for you to do? What is the scope of work that the city is all asking for? It, you know, uh, council should be treated, in, in, you know, I know this is gonna go across bad, and you know, I, I'll, I'll stand and take the heat for it. But this city council are juveniles at this point in in in, in, in our development in regards. Objection. Come on. Uh, um, uh, this is uh, this uh, is no, open. No, no, you do no, not no, get no. to interrupt no, me. You do not get finish, to interrupt finish, me. Finish your point. Finish okay. Him, no. Don't, don't, him, don't, you don't get exactly. to do this. We are in on the order. Right. We are in public. Um, we just in a regular um, work session. We're juveniles when it comes to dealing with SPLOS management and not just us, but there are other cities that are in the same, you know, they're in the same arena. They, you know, they never been given this opportunity before because they never had a spot. But we're, we're, we're in a different situation that we have six city council members, including the mayor that has never served in the office before, and this is no excuse. But what is, what is proper 
is what I'm proposing, what I've always proposed, is to push this back out to RFQ or RFP or some combination of the both to include you in that or anybody else and let the best man win. But that way, the citizens are at least comfortable that we have done our due diligence in bringing the best people to the table. You certainly, when Brookhaven, the city that you're still with, have entertained 34 different companies. I mean, you know, why would it be okay in anybody's eyes that the city of Stonecrest only entertain two? And, you know, and if you remember, if you recall, and maybe you don't, uh, the first time I ever saw you was in front of city council at the library. And I was impressed with you then. I am impressed with you now. And I think I will probably always remain impressed with you because of the level of work that your company has projected that they do. Based on my personal interaction with you, uh, to full disclosure, you and I had lunch and we talked about some, some of these issues. And so it is not, um, you know, I'm not trying to th throw shade at they, as they would say, but I, I you know, <laughs> um, and and if I am, then I apologize for that. You know, uh, uh, you know. But what I am saying is that I th I don't think it would be your your experience that you would ever recommend if you were even now uh, our spots manager, program manager. You would not recommend that we would take services that uh, just based on you know you you call two of your friends up or two companies and say hey I like you guys. Uh, which one of y'all we're gonna put just you two in front of council? You wouldn't do that to us, right? You would you would you would recommend that we do an RFP. Let me correct you on one. Please thing. do, please do, because yeah. I don't I don't pretend to know it all, that's and that's why. Sure yeah, okay. Brookhaven experience and your summary at the same time. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I was done. I was just entertaining questions. Yeah, I was done with this. Um, so the city of Brookhaven, during their first two-year procurement process, where there was no procurement process in place, they retained a company to come in to do public works. That was before the RFQ even came into process. So Brookhaven did do that prior to. The public works folks came in and helped them develop RFQ, RFPs, and then they went out for the SPLOS program management. But the first people that showed up there was the public works consultant, Best, your best, your, 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 um, what would you call the best practice? The, the initial way or the, the ultimate way that you guys did? The reason why the state allows cities to have purchases early to get the city up and running is that process. So both ways are acceptable in, pre in this industry. And, yes, ma'am. No worries. Okay. And, and then um, to speak to, you mentioned problems during the, uh, you mentioned something about the city had problems and they want to change direction or something like that. Not problems. I mean, I, I didn't, I, you know, if I said problems, I may have said okay. problems because it, it's been a problematic process. <laughs> and so... When you say problematic process, you're talking about the procurement or are you talking about the work that Grice have done? Because see, I've The heard procurement. Okay, procurement. Okay. So again, I, if I have at any point in this conversation said anything negative in towards the work that Grace has done, I haven't even approached that yet. So I, I, I would not say that, you know, but in, and only because I don't want to go into that arena, there are some things that I'm, I'm concerned about uh, that, well, that took, took place early on. But outside of that, you know, I'm, 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 you know, it's, I'm okay with what I'm hearing. So out of all the, I haven't received any emails from the city that they have problems with anything we do. I've received a great job. Fantastic. All in emails. Great job. Um, this is wonderful from the mayor. This is great. From, I have emails about You know what, Mr. Funny? Three times you've mentioned me, and I've, heard, I've, and I've held this for the third time. I've called you into my office personally because I do hand-to-hand -hand combat. I don't go through emails. I called you in my office personally with the assistant city manager and the city manager to get clarity, even on the pre sploss work that I was not satisfied with. So all of this raving about the mayor, all of these, this, this, this letter here that doesn't have my signature on it, all of this stuff, just, just, just stick with the facts. You can leave, you can, you can, you can leave me out of this. From you can, you can leave me out of this. Just, 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 just finish up with what you're doing. Um, 
It's well documented. M Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, well, okay. I've been trying to get the floor for a while. And in the words of my colleague, Mr. Gama, I'm requesting equal time to my uh, colleague, Mr. Clanton, uh, because we were not, <coughs> we did not bring Mr. Funny here for involvement in how we make the selection. That is something that the council and by majority vote has made a decision. And I perceive what you were saying was calling us juvenile initially, but now I understand differently. So I apologize for that. But I think in respect to this council of six, for the majority, we made a decision. To do what? Cl 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 clarify that, Mr. We, I mean, Mr. We, we, Mr. Turner, when you said we made, made a decision. We made a decision to go with our first, well, really to continue what we had started from the beginning with the initial uh, agreement. And that involved Grice Consulting to uh, do our splash management for us. And that was basically bringing clarity to it. To say that, yes, let's proceed with it. And we did not have to do the uh, competitive bidding process <coughs> because the uh, city was not at that level where we had that process in place. And we had to bound it according to our legal counsel. And if that was incorrect, you have to deal with our legal counsel on that matter. And we proceeded. But even at that, we asked for a second bid or a second proposal. And we heard, we heard two proposals and believed that it was proceeding. Now we're into negotiation. And we were hoping that those negotiations, at least I was, would be in good faith. And they would honestly try to come to some resolution as to something that we can work on in terms of reaching a contract. And to my understanding, Mr. Funny was coming to explain his position on where we stand with those negotiations from his perspective. We've heard city's perspective as where we stand. And it was my hope that we'd be getting a bit closer and not be so combative in trying to still reverse what the council has ruled on. And that's what I hear. And it seems to be counterproductive. And we bring in elements that have little or nothing to do with this uh, negotiation. So, my two cents. And I didn't take the same. <laughs> I appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, may I? Just, uh, I'll, I'll be brief. And, and, and just, <laughs> George said no, he won't. <laughs> I'll be brief as I can, you know. Um, may, I, may I just compliment the fact that you two, two gentlemen stood tall on this and stayed? Thank you. Well, I appreciate that too, Ms. I think that that's only, um, that's what our job is. Um, not to run from, run from issues, not to take sides, but to hear every, every side out and to be able to communicate and talk back and forth uh, in, a, in an open forum. And uh, it's because I am honestly as they would, uh, Mr. Turner would put, in good faith, want the right end and the right conclusion to this issue. And, you know, if we made mistakes along the way, you know, which I don't say we have necessarily made mistakes, but even if that was the case, then we are not beholden to continue down a path that is destructive and that is not the path that we should or not the precedents that we should set going forth. Uh, I do disagree with uh, Councilman Turner in saying that this was our first RFP because I'm pretty certain it wasn't our first. I never said that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Then I misunderstood your statement. It was it, We did have the process in place to do RFPs and RFQs. It's been on the website since day one. Um, you know, you can go back and look at uh, where we are able and been able and willing to do our FQs and our FPs. However, we've gotten to this point, uh, I, you know, and that's why I asked the question initially, how did you, uh, your company get to be on the agenda for the day? Who put, who put you on the agenda for, who put you, <laughs> right, who put you on the agenda to, for today? Because I wanted to know I, I what it is that we that we should be discussing today. You were directed to attend. 
Right, and I appreciate that. And, and, and the point, the reason why I'm going down this path is because just what Councilman Turner said, you know, if you're here for a reason A and we're talking about Z, it's wasted time and effort again. <laughs> so, you know, if we're here just to, to hear a presentation about the um, their side of the story is in regards to the the, uh, the where, we stand, where the we stand with the negotiations, then I don't think we heard that at all. Mr. Curry told us to show up here and to address two things. The first was the qualifications, which was the most important thing that Mr. Curry was uh, interested in. And obviously, it's important to have someone um, who's well qualified. So there was no um, problem with addressing that concern, and that's why you saw the slides with all the, with all the experience, and I think uh, Mr. Funny has, has asked that that is addressed. The second issue was on the pricing, uh, and that's what he was trying to explain, was, explain it, but um, <laughs> I can't, but um, so those are the two things that we were asked to address specifically, and that's what you're here to talk about. I did want to mention that's one good. thing about, about procurement, which would drive me crazy, because I, I do a lot of This type of contract actually is very different. This is not set up to be done by machines. It's set up to be professional services, and it's extremely hard to define the scope of the work. It's not like you're buying 100 computers or five desktops or paper clips or anything else. You're buying services. And as you can tell, the scope you can't just put out there and say, come, come make a bid on, on cost per dynamic. Well, what do you want me to do? Because that makes a very awkward uh, RFP. This kind of work at all levels, whether it's federal, state, uh, or local, whether it's a whether it's a mature uh, organization or a new one, um, even a, a very experienced um, uh, city uh, would do this uh, by negotiation, not by not by bid. So Brookhaven did. They did. They can. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, Brookhaven didn't do that, right? They, I mean, they entertain 34 companies. So, you know, to say that this is typical, well, oh, oh, I mean, I see you guys at the back of the room shaking your head. No, they didn't. I mean, I, it's a horrible waste of time. It, it may be. It may be. But uh, my, uh, my, uh, my only point was that it is obviously done both ways. Okay. All right. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Right. Exactly. And I agree. Thank you for your time, Mr. Funny. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, wrap this up. Yeah, well, and I don't want to belabor this much longer mm -hmm. than it already has gone, but there are a couple of things I did want to make sure we kind of clarified. You know, I, I heard the conversation been mentioned a few times in regards to RFP, RFQ process. I, just for a point of clarification, it was a it was a presentation that was done by the request of the council, and, and, and council subsequently requested that another firm come out and do, another, do a presentation. You know, again, I think that's, separate aside from a formal RFQ process. So I do want to kind of clarify that. Um, another point in regards to the pro information that was provided by staff concerning the figures that were being proposed by, um, by Grice, um, the figures we provided in our summary were correct. I think what Mr. Funny was alluding to was that there was a statement that said, that listed in his previous iteration, this is what was listed. And that's what he quoted, if you turn to the next page, it clearly states um, what the new proposed numbers reflect. So I did want to clarify that that was accurately depicted in our summary. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Funny going through the issue regarding the qualifications for um, program management. That's something, quite frankly, we've been asking for for quite some time. Um, so I appreciate getting some information now that we're able to kind of go through and do an assessment in regards to that. Um, uh, so that's something we can kind of go back through and, and look at. I, again, further appreciate the fact that, you know, we have the negotiation process, and I don't want this forum to become the negotiation process we've been going through. Certainly, I, I feel in good faith. I think we've made, we've made substantial strides, I think, on, in both locations, in both areas. Um, as indicated in the CTP, we see a reduction in price of 300000 Now, that unto itself, you know, I think what's, what's, what we want to go back and look at you know, he, he and then very accurately and, 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 and much appreciate him going through and depicting what that 300000 or what those, what those items eliminated were. You know, so certainly we want to make sure that we're still getting the requisite amount of, our, of the scope that we're looking for. 
you know, based on that number. But, you know, certainly we've made substantial strides as it relates to CTP. I think we are, um, I think he's addressed the, the vast majority of the things that we've discussed. Um, and he's right. You know, Dunwoody's scope was much, which was, was, was far less, and it was indicative in the price that they, that they, that they paid, about 60000 a third of what we're currently at right now. So I think we're certainly far, far closer as it relates to the CTP. On the program management side, again, a big part of what we're looking for were the qualifications to see where it's been done before. Above and beyond everything else, the staff's recommendation has been, has been consistent. I, I think that it, it's certainly we still have the opportunity to go through, and I agree with Mr. Brown, uh, and I think an RFQ process is much more appropriate in this case as opposed to an RFP. Um, where you go through and, and you put it out and allow firms to come back in, provide their qualifications, and have the council make a determination based on um, their qualifications to be able to perform the work. Um, certainly, and going back to August of 2017, the original information we received from um, Grice was specifically in regards to their um, qualifications as related to CTP and not so much for the um, for program management. Today, we've received some additional information as it relates to as it relates to program management, so it certainly gives us an opportunity to go back through and review that information. Um, I, I think this is still another part of the process. I mean, we've received additional information. Um, Mr. Brown provided some information on the seventeenth. We've subsequently gone back and, and provided our notes that we've shared with council on the twenty fourth or, or around that time frame, and now they've given us additional information today that we need to take into consideration for, for moving forward. But again. From a staff standpoint, and that we've had this conversation for those who've been charged with going through these negotiations, I think overall our recommendation is that we move forward with, or continue to move forward with, or pursue an RFQ process. With that said, CTP, they certainly have. I think we are very, very close to where we think is a is 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 is, is, a, is, is a position we should be. I think we still have a, a number of issues we still need to continue to work through and flesh out as it relates to the program management. And our recommendation would still be, I, and I think it's good. If we were to move forward now with the CTP, I think that would give us additional time to go through that RFQ process for the program management. So, again, I think that we have a couple of options for the council to consider. Okay. Um, just my observation. Uh, we have a 25-page presentation. Very well done. And we'll go back to what that, that, that I've seen. Uh, 20 pages is CTP, which is the smallest portion of the whole thing. I'm not, and, 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 and very well done, this whole particular piece of it. Five out of the 25 pages is SPLOS, which is, a, which is the lion's share of money, lion's share of everything that we're supposed to be doing. You would think that would be in reverse. So... Even when we go back to, and, 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 and uh, respectfully, Councilman Turner, this is where you and I uh, disagree. Um, um, well, not just you and I, clearly four people disagree, is that we did not issue a contract for SPLOS or an agreement to do SPLOS in August of 2017. We did not do that. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You, you can even go back and look at the proposal. All of his proposal was CTP, other than the last page. So, with regards to us being obligated, because that seems to be the word that, uh, that is not being said up here, we're not obligated to do anything but to take care of the needs of the citizens of Stonecrest. That's where our obligation is. And um, whether we're mad about it, whether we had some missteps, whether, whatever. Uh, let, let me let me make something that's very clear. That's that should be clear to everybody. How can we issue a contract for SPLOS to do the actual SPLOS work in August when SPLOS didn't pass until November? So we did not do that. And all you know, people are in fear that somebody's going to get sued here. Someone do your business then. If that's what you think it is, because that's 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 that, that's not the case. And we've had on two. Legal opinions from our city attorney and another law firm that explicitly have told counsel there is no obligation to this particular piece of it. If it was, we still wouldn't be trying to negotiate now to get a contract that they don't have. 
So I'll go back to what Jimmy Clanton says, which makes the most sense. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that we've been talking about along with the, 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 the city manager, we've been doing more than negotiating in good faith. We, staff and the city attorney has been in this for more than three months negotiating in good faith. And it, it is flawed from the outset. And Mr. Mr. Attorney, I disagree with you uh, on, on this end of it when you said that most of these things don't go out for RFP or RFQ, and if I'm misquoting you, say so, because <coughs> DeKalb County went out for bid, Dunwoody went out for bid, and while we're not trying to go out for bid, it's bananas. So we've had all these conversations. We've had all these talking points. But what we're going to do from this point is do exactly what we're trying to do, which is get to an end point with regards to also the citizens. That's why I put together a Citizens SPLOS committee and picking individuals from the different districts because they are stakeholders. They get a say. And what I found out recently, there is some serious talent in Stonecrest when it comes to, to, to their experience with transportation plans, legal, uh, uh, program management, all from citizens here that should get a say. So I'll go back to what something that uh, Councilman Clanton, you said that, that, that struck with me. You know, that would be the fair thing to do. No one's trying to exclude Grice from the process, but the process is to take care of Stonecrest first. The process is to make sure that we have best of class first and get this work done. Because even looking at uh, Grice's proposal, you're still at 7% when everybody else is at 2.5 or 3 or 4 or 5 in that area. And because it's what people have done in the past or what cities have done, I don't care. What I care about is getting the best bang for our buck with regards to the city of Stonecrest. Now, if, 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 if people are upset about that, you just have to be upset about that. And our end of it, and I'll go back to our, I'll go back to our, our, uh, um, our oath here as a city, without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. That's what I'm trying trying to achieve here. And I, I was, I've said it a hundred times. So. We're going to engage our citizens. We're going to make sure that we have the, 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 the um, um, best program management for either side to make sure that we can get to where we're going collectively because we only get one shot at this. We only get one shot at this. So, Council, you have more comments? I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen. Uh, one uh, clarity. You mentioned the SPLOS Oversight Committee yes. would have a say in this? process in terms of the selection of uh well, what i said was that they would have a, an opinion with okay. regards to what is happening here just like you all oh, at yes. the arabia mountain committee have an opinion right and then you submit recommendations correct right oh absolutely this committee is no different than that they solicit and then they will be offering their opinion as to what these things should be okay that's on the whole point of having you know an oversight committee Okay, I, maybe, that's why I wanted clarity. It okay. sounded like you were saying that uh, they would uh, get involved in this process that we've been trying to resolve with whether they do an RFP, RFQ, uh, continue the road that well, we're on. Well, they'll have an opinion about it. Oh, yeah, we all have an opinion about right. it. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Just like the committees that you sit on today. Absolutely. Okay. You know, so whether you choose as a legislator to listen to them, that's going to be on you. It's going to be on me. Yes, that's yeah. where we are now. Well, we're, we're, we're not quite there now. <laughs> yeah. We're not quite there now. I mean, I have to listen to my constituents now. Yeah. 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 I do. So, so it, must be, it must be doing this then because. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> Gentlemen. Gentlemen. So, so, it, it's, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Mr. Turner, um, where, where I'm standing right now is that where do we go from here? We're in the midst of a negotiation. Obviously, it's been talked about it. There is information going uh, back and forth between the city staff and uh, Grice Consulting. Uh, at this point, what what I'm you know I'm you know 
there should be a time restriction given the fact that this has been going on as far as I'm, I know for the past three months. And at some point in time, there has to be a decision made and uh, between the two, between the staff and Grice Consulting, and that decision should be brought to council. And I prefer that we see that sooner rather than later. Um, as Mr. Turner has said on one other occasion, we've heard a lot of talk about this and, you know, and at, at some point we just need to go ahead and, and you know, bring it to a vote yeah. and, and move forward with this, you know, with, with staff recommendations <coughs> and however you guys deem necessary uh, you guys, in this case, meaning the city attorney, deem necessary to present this to council, that it goes from there. I would say that the citizens of Stonecrest deserve a full understanding and uh, um, full knowledge of what's going on behind the scenes because, as you all know, that when, when it comes to city government, there is no such thing or should be no such thing as behind the scenes. And that's what today was to get us one step closer with this presentation. And, uh, my, my view would Hopefully be, we did. My hopefully. view would be this. Um, working with the uh, city manager, um, come to whatever sort of an agreement, you know, that the best we can do. Um, and then you have the two factions. And some, somehow you've just, we've just got to present a contract to council and council can vote it up or down. Or we can go with the recommendation of the city manager and staff that we shouldn't issue an RFQ for this. And you could do that too. That, and, would, you know, that would certainly take you know, less time to do that. But if we're, you know, uh, if we have been negotiating, I still think that there's you know, an endpoint there. But if, if it comes sure. back and they say, we don't, you know, here it is, and we don't, we don't, we, you know, we still want the RFQ, then so be it. Well, am I misspeaking? Or am I misspeaking on your behalf, Mr. City Manager? No, I, I think we, I think from the staff standpoint, we've been pretty consistent throughout. And again, I want to make, make it the point, since it was brought up earlier, that um, the firm that I'm with previously gave a proposal on this. Should the council opt to go through that process and go through an RFQ, um, the firm that's currently providing um, management services would not be pursuing that. So there's not, I want to make sure that's made clear uh, to the council, to the public, that we, that Jacob cf 2 would not be pursuing that RFQ. Well, then why not, if you want to just go up or down, then go ahead and schedule your, you know, schedule, put it on the agenda for the next meeting. To so issue an RFQ? The issue an RFQ. I mean, it's, it's been attempted before. I'm not to say that it won't be successful this time. Okay. I mean, that's, and I'm sorry. Um, I still want to see an RFQ. Well, I mean, they can I still want to see an RFQ. I mean, you know, yeah. just come up I think with the best and final. There, there, there are certain issues in, you know, I'm, now this is just your lawyer, okay? Mm -hmm. The RFQ, that's staff's recommendation. But if we don't get to the point where we're going to do an RFQ, then um, to me it would be that we go ahead and and come up with, the, with, with a proposal you know, final low, you know, so I'll do it for this type thing. But there are other things that have to be done relating to occupancy, uh, relating to furnishings. There's, there's other issues involved in this agreement other than just price and how we do it um, that still have to be, be finalized in it. Now, you can say, don't, you know, don't go do that, and I won't go do that. Um, and wait until the next meeting and vote it up or down, and then if it, if it, if, if the, they come back and say yes, then we take that process. If they say no, then I think you have your answer. Uh, I frankly would, put, would probably put you in a worse negotiating position if that, if that happens that way.
Yeah, I think they're transparent here as far as what would happen. You know, council has already spoken with that vote, and they're expecting to get something back in terms of a recommendation. And what that recommendation looks like, uh, it's going to be up to the negotiating team. Uh, as we to, just well, no, 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 we no. just gave a recommendation. We're, we're discussing it, but it has to be a written recommendation to council based on the negotiation. And that's what we have, but Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. This is what we have right here. No, no, this is for discussion. No, no this, that this actually is was a written council. recommendation it's from council. Yeah. Excuse me, written recommendation from the city manager. And right. the, that is a recommendation, said. and and they, you know, uh, I don't know if they would change their opinion or not. I'm, you know, so I'm so, I'm, no, no, no. I'm somewhat of the scribe, the mediator. I yeah. play lots of different different roles here. No, no, no. The, the point I'm trying to make, you know, based on this recommendation, are we saying that negotiations are complete? We're done? Well, Mr. 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 Grice's attorney no. just said, I mean, no, I'm no, sorry, no, Mr. Funny, no, Mr. No, Funny no, attorney asking, just I'm said asking, that. I'm asking, if, are if, the negotiations complete? Done? Uh, he's saying that he's willing to do a best, uh, best, what, how do you, how you put it? It was, it was a question. I think the, um, the, the, the city council can do what it wants. It can, it can go, Obviously. you know, and, and there are repercussions one way or the other. But the the um, the best way forward to get to that point uh, would be for Grice to present a best and final contract. Best and final. Uh, with bells and whistles that's ready to be signed. That's what Mr. Turner and and the city council and us, we've been working on for the three months. That you've tried to <coughs> and, and to get to that point to where you, where if four members think that's a good contract, then we're done. If four members think you want to do a year-long process for selecting more bidders and prolong the SPLOS uh, investment another year while you find somebody, then that's what's going to happen. Then that's so, what's yeah, happen. Good word, Smithy, Mr. Le Mr. So, Attorney, but so it doesn't I, take a year to do an RFQ. It doesn't take a year to do that. It will take a year to find the people to staff to write the RFQ. Yeah, this thing is going. It didn't take no. a no. That's <laughs> come, on. <laughs> come on, man. I think we can work together. We've actually been we've actually made a lot of progress, Mr. Turner, staff, and Mr. Curry. First, for the CTP piece of it, we're still working on the program management, and in a couple of weeks, we can present to the city council a best and final they can vote on. And move on. Again, yeah. again, Mr. Attorney, you you you, uh, John Funny should pat you on the back. Uh, because you do a really good job of representing him. Now I have to represent the city of Stonecrest. And the best order of business for the representing the city of Stonecrest is to take what our city manager and staff have put together as an a attorney. recommendation of to go out for an RFQ. So it's send out for an RFQ. In addition to that, if we're going to put together, like I think that everyone has agreed because you've been submitting names, for the Citizen Sploss Oversight Committee, wouldn't it be just as fair for them to at least have their say uh, with regards to what they think, with regards to recommendations? Wouldn't that be fair also? It's their money. Okay? Is there, I, I, is their I money? Don't, I don't see that. But anyway, uh, I still haven't got the question answered, and that is, are the negotiations finished? The negotiations are not finished. First, we're under, we're, we have been charged by full city council. Not full. To Majority. negotiate in good faith. Everybody has, city manager, the attorney, and Grice, to negotiate in good faith the contract on both of these things. And that is what we're going to do. And you, you, you're saying that that hasn't happened so far? No, no. No, I said we're in the process of doing it. Okay, if the city accepted our last proposal, we'd be <coughs> If they haven't, we're still working. Well, I, you know, the charge, the charge is, is what the majority has decided, and that is to negotiate in good faith. That doesn't, I'm not saying that that requires the, the city to accept any offer. That's what it sounds like. No, no, it sounds no, exactly like what you're what saying, like. negotiating no, 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 good I, faith I, I, I is I until we are okay, until we okay, okay with what you're saying. I was trying saying. to get a question answered. Is that, is he, so you're trying to get exactly a question right? answered, Mr. Clanton. Well, he's not answering your question. No, no, he's well, no, uh, the, well he, he, gave, he gave a part answer, and another part comes from the other part of the team. Attorney Curry, uh, are the negotiations finished? 
Obviously, no. I mean, no, I'll tell you, Curry. No, no. So, so what I'm no. saying is, this cannot no. be the final. Okay, so we got your, you got your answer. So, can, can yes, sir, please do, please. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely regarding that the obligation to negotiate in good faith doesn't mean that the city of Stonecrest has to take whatever Grice says. Of course not. It's a good faith process of negotiation that we're that we're in. And your, your comments about extraordinary price or whatever, it comes from the buyer's point of view, just like you said. Totally agree with you. And I agree with the mayor that the, 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 the uh, citizens have to be, that's who we're doing this for. I mean, Mr. Funny isn't up here saying that, that you have to take the contract. He's telling you you should because he's the best person for the job and the price is reasonable. And that's what he's going to sell you. And that's what, what I think the, the city council will, will agree with when the... So can I ask you this, sir? Do you think at this point in time that the um, negotiation has been in good faith to this point? The um, Right in the middle to get the, the idea that I ought to go out for RFQ, um, I think caused us some heartburn since the city council has already made the decision to not do that. Um, that that was a curve. I don't, I don't know. I don't, wouldn't call it in bad faith. Um, some of the things that Grice has had to deal with in the public media um, is not consistent with commercial reasonableness. Uh, I think in most uh, fields, um, and that's not the way you do business, and that's not the way you negotiate with people. Um, I don't think it helps to call things in bad faith because um, uh, I know that. That Mr. Funny and I have, have worked well with Mr. with, with city manager, assistant city manager, and and with attorneys. So I think, and with Mr. Uh, who's been at these work meetings and these negotiations meetings. So I think we're I think the city of Stonecrest is heading in the right direction. It just needs to go ahead and make a final decision. Sharpen. We would say sharpen your pencil. You know, make all the changes you need to make. And let's let's see if we go. But the mayor is exactly right that this is for the. For the uh, citizens, it's not for Christ. <coughs> Christ is the best for the citizens. So if, if, if it wouldn't have philosophy, sir, then you wouldn't have a problem with engaging our citizens on a, uh, on a committee with regards to this. I would. Here's why. They oh, I see now. Because they elected you. Yeah, but they have a say-so by even when they elect us. I understand, but they don't have, they, they, they have a, this is a representative government. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner, Mr. Klan, and you and the other and are better qualified. Because you have the power and the responsibility to make decisions, so I, I think anybody would need input. Um, and, and, and Mr. Funny's proposal calls for citizens' input, and that's yeah. After he has a contract, I'm talking about before we select anyone. You know, it's not usual for a government to to sort of cede their responsibility. They've been elected to discharge. Not ceding know? our responsibility. We're getting input from it, our constituents. I think you can do. You can always do that. Same way with Rockdale, same way with DeKalb. This is not uncommon for what we're talking about here. If you need five citizen mm. commissions, go get them. That's fine. That's fine. But this is a project that needs to get started, and either through Grice or somebody else. So that's whether you have commissions or not, that's your business. That's the, you know, who you rely upon to inform you of the decisions that you need to make, whether it's one person or a thousand, that's not our concern. Good deal, because that's what we're going to do. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. City Attorney, you good? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's just a job, Mayor. <laughs> It's more than a job. That's, it's just a job. <laughs> okay. We've, you know, I've told you this before. Okay, let's do the best I can. All right. Mr. City Manager? All right. <laughs> so you have, you have We're adjourned. <laughs>